Today is the day that we reveal our big Kansas City house that we are building as owner builders in Kansas City on 11 acres. Yes, we are moving to Kansas City, Missouri for at least one year, and we are in the process of building our first new home ever. I'm gonna ask you the question, what made us decide to buy a house, to build a house in Kansas City? Let's take us through our journey, our financial journey, our decision-making process of why the heck why are we even building a house in Kansas City, Missouri? That's true. I get asked that question all the time, too. I know. Well, because we like it, first and foremost. But um, So it all started way back when, um, a year and a half ago. Right. Right. November of, was it 2019? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, November of 2019. November of 2019, you made the decision that Kansas City was going to be the next potential market. What we do is we pick the family up and we booked a trip and we went for Thanksgiving week for the for an entire week to Kansas City. We spent Thanksgiving there. We went to a Raiders game against the Kansas City Chiefs we then. Yep. Mm -hmm. We fell in love with Kansas City. I mean, we had an amazing time. We went to parks and we looked at a lot of real estate and we went to great restaurants and we met with different realtors we made some lifelong friends that beginning trip right, right? right. Um, and so you know normally a week for us anywhere as a family we're usually like a four day like we're in we're in in and we're out right and so for us to go anywhere for seven days was amazing and it went by really quick and we bought a bunch of real estate that particular yeah. trip okay right. like bought a you, bunch of real estate. you were just like boom we looked for two, three days straight, saw deal after deal after deal after deal after deal in our perfect price point and business model. COVID hits, Eden's full blown, wearing personal protective gear everywhere. She's doing a deal with my next door neighbor across the street here who's got hazmat suits. Things are getting crazy in Las Vegas. Nobody will talk to you, everybody's staying home. I've got a property manager who's robbing me blind out in Kansas City. I know I need to be there. I know I'm not hiring another property manager. I'm not going through that process again. The only person that can manage my properties as good as I want them done is us, okay? So I told my wife, I said, hey, man, nobody's doing anything. Why don't we go up to Kansas City? And she looks at me like, give me your look. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly the look I got. I got this look. Are you nuts? What are we gonna do? Where are we gonna live? Where Nobody's flying. The airlines aren't even flying. At this point, it was like right in the thick of it. So what did we do? We rented an RV. We rented an RV. We motored across country. We decided to go drive to Kansas City. That was the first thing. I hit her with it like 30 days, like the first two weeks after COVID. I'm like, let's rent an RV. Let's do it. Nobody's going to be renting RVs right now. Let's go do it. She's like, what are you crazy? Like this is at the time where she was literally following me around with an alcohol spray, spraying me everywhere. This, that. I had to strip when I came inside the house. She was literally letting our Amazon package season outside. So I knew it was time that we needed to get out to the wild, open outdoors. And did you have a good time? We had a great time. Uh, I mean, really, I never would have expected it. So we had a great time. And that was our first voyage back to Kansas City. We went looking at all these houses. We looked at like 20 houses. Thank you, Andrea Wardell, our agent. Thank she's, you, sorry, we didn't find it. <laughs> yeah, so she's a bit of great agent. We bought plenty with her yes. and we love her to death. We found a house that we liked. It was on a pond, it was on the perfect acres, everything that we wanted, but the guy selling the lots to both sides of me. So now I'm gonna have two new neighbors. And guess what? That pond that I wanna look at, the other guy owns it. You don't even have access to it other than to just look you're, at it. You're able to use it visually and that yep. was it. So we decided that we were gonna build our house in Kansas City and we started looking at land. We went to go look at big houses, little houses, houses with land, house without land. And then we decided, you know what, we're just gonna build it. And this has been our plan for a long period of time. About two years ago, I convinced my wife that when we do leave Vegas, even though we're gonna plan on 
always having a presence in Vegas because we love Las Vegas. Our long-term journey incorporates more land. I like land, I like motorcycles, and a bigger house. What we found was, man, in land, an acre in Las Vegas will cost you $400,000, right? An acre in Kansas City was $17,000, $18,000. So as we started looking around, my wife found this property on Walker Road, okay? As we're driving out there, I'm excited because I'm mapping it out. I noticed that it's right by the airport. As I told you, I'm coming back and forth to Las Vegas. I may be back and forth from Florida. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you definitely should right now. If you don't follow me on TikTok, you definitely should because you're gonna see how many houses I own and how many places they're at. Let's get into how we came up with the design, what was the inspiration for the design, and really how we selected the architect. The design is kind of this, it's a little culmination of like modern farmhouse, she I'm always gonna have a little bit of glam you know I'm from New York we live in Vegas we're gonna kind of pull a lot of different elements together so our architect is Adam Pfeiffer he was a recommendation from our realtor through a connection through another person we designed it together we designed it with the architect but she really ran everything well we actually to Adam's credit, we gave him um, our, a list of wants, right? Wants, desires, like must-haves. And then he, I mean, he did the rest, really. He did an amazing job where normally we'll get architectural renderings back after a certain period of time and then be like, okay, we wanna change this. We, I mean, maybe we need this. Very, he's got an, an amazing attention to detail, very thought on all different types of really cool um, just ideas and bringing like this big huge space and designing it so that we could have several families be very comfortable should we decide to rent it out Airbnb or and just entertain entertain baby doll what is your favorite part of the house favorite part of the house is the theater slash game room area. And what makes it special to me is I, I specifically designed it so that there would be um, sliding doors to close it off so you could have that theater experience where it would be private and, and dark and secluded and quiet to view. And then if you wanna open those doors, it opens right up to the pool table and the bar area so that if you wanna put like the game on it and then you know it's all open and everybody can mix and mingle. And I like that, the thought of that. Sweet. My favorite. Good job. What about you? What's your favorite? Um, I actually thought about this question and as you know, I don't really care about any rooms or stuff. Oh, the garage. You're, good call. <laughs> the I didn't even tell you, yeah. My favorite spot is the garage. Um, it's an oversized garage. I'm gonna be able to park, one of my biggest problems, I got a truck I can't even park in the garage. So I'm gonna be able to park any size truck I want in that garage and I'm gonna be able to build out a gym on the top of the garage. I'm gonna be able to build out my office on the top of the garage, a studio for me to film on the top of the garage and, all, and a shower and all of that stuff and I'll be able to put my razor in the garage. The other part of this house that I love is the land. The land is beautiful, it's rolling hills. We're building our house on the top of the hill overlooking a pond which we share with our neighbors and the other part I love about the house is how close it is to the airport I love everything I know she is not gonna miss one detail on this house in fact she won't miss one detail on anything so she's not missing a detail on this house and everything's gonna be great I'm not worried about it at all and I'm just super excited to go and spend time with our family growing a garden in the yard building stuff that can teach our kids about how to work hard, how to do stuff. Where are we in the progress of the house? Do we have any specific date of completion? I mean, we have, we're very hopeful for certain things. We've hit a lot of snags, things, you know, if it could go right or it could go wrong, if it went wrong, it took us out by a week, a, you know, a couple weeks, a month, you know. First and foremost, beware of who you hire. Your vendor choice is more important than you could ever know. But I always say, you don't know what you don't know. And you know, nobody sets out 
to pick a bad vendor. That's never the intention. So we, we had a misstep. We chose the wrong excavator. And from there, there was just a series of setbacks and weather and mistakes. Just going back, we originally got the plans <clears throat> delivered to us in February, and then it took them a month to get it turned around to us with a permit. And then we had to go back and get septic plans. And then we had a whole bunch of more stuff to do. And then we are ready to go and we're super excited. We're still shooting for an end of the year completion day. I really believe it can happen. We're gonna be there in August. We're gonna have total control of exactly what happens. We'll be able to make stuff happen. Right now we're in Vegas. We're at the mercy of calling people and getting them to show up. We should have an expected completion date by the end of the year. Let's get in there by Christmas. Oh, that'd be nice. Honor before tw December 25th. So how did we manage our spend? Did we overspend? Okay, so let me get into that. First of all, I came in there with a ridiculous budget. I said, I'm gonna get this thing done for $650,000 because I'm using Mississippi numbers. I'm using Mississippi labor. And I'm thinking, man, these houses in Kansas City are cheap. The labor must be cheap if the houses are cheap. The old houses I'm buying are cheap. I'm thinking it's gotta be cheap to build houses because I built them in Mississippi and I know I could build this house in Mississippi for 650,000. This is pre-COVID pricing. It is pre-COVID pricing. So pre-COVID, I'm thinking 650, you know, 4,200 square foot house with big garage called a 2,400 square foot garage. My lumber is going to be like $60,000. Well, we can tell you right now, the lumber is going to cost us $170,000. Uh, the windows I budgeted around 30 grand. We're already double on that. It's $62,000. Um, the excavation was going to be around $25,000. Our first guy ripped us off for 12,500 bucks already. So that's already over budget. What we're doing right now is we have to put piers below the foundation of the basement, which is another $25,000. Okay, so to answer you, are we on budget? No. Do we have a budget? Absolutely not. Because I had one and it just is brain damage because it's <laughs> never gonna get done. I'm like trying to bend spoons with my freaking mind, okay? Sure, sure. Yeah, like So what's your philosophy when that occurs, when we step out of the box, when we when we blow through a budget, what is your philosophy? Go make more money. Always go make Always. more freaking money. Make someone else pay for that house. Because you know what? If you focus on trying to skin this guy down on the money and you keep focusing on that effort and you're realizing that you're not getting anywhere, guess what you're doing? You're wasting time and you're not making any money. So if we say, you know what, it's gonna cost us $150,000, $200,000 more than we anticipated, you know what? Let's hire the best guys, let's get it done, let's not deal with any more BS and let me go flip four more houses for 50,000 bucks a piece to pay for it, okay? Let me focus on what I can do versus what I can't control, okay? I can't control the price of lumber, I can't control the price of windows, I can't control hiring a deadbeat contractor that should be locked in jail, but we're definitely gonna report him to the local contractor board because we did give him so much time to finish this basement and he just jerked us around, took our money, robbed her soul, she hasn't been the same since. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not that bad. Yeah. It's okay. All right, all right, all right. I'm okay. All right, all right. So that brings me to my next point, which is hitting the subscribe button, hitting the like button, and have we encountered any problems? Yes, yes, yeah. It's you know what? You know what you told me a long time ago. You told me it's construction equals there's problems. Like the two, those two words go hand in hand. They right. are synonymous, synonyms, construction and problems. Right. Boom. So, you know, I learned that a little while ago and then you just, you know, you, you have to try to ebb and flow right. and uh, not get too emotional about things. You're very good about that. Like it is what it is. We can't do anything about this specifically. Let's just move on, keep positive, moving forward. Our basic number one issue would be you would not choose to build a basement if we could do it over again no it doesn't have to do with that i want her to get what she wants and having not known like i knew that basements disturb water tables because when you're digging into the ground just think of yourself as digging at a beach and the water starts to fill up okay when you're digging into the water table in vegas that's not going to affect you because we don't have any water but when you're digging into the water table in a place that rains a lot and kansas city gets a lot of rain when you're digging into the water table you're going to disturb the water right 
Now, obviously, I really believe that if it was just a house that I was looking to sell, I honestly wouldn't put peers in it, okay? But because we've been advised that that's the best way to go, we're gonna blow an extra $25,000 on the basement. So yeah, absolutely, the basement has been the worst decision. So yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing. We're learning, and I embrace learning, and I think that, you know what, we've never built a basement, and the biggest mistake we made, to be honest with you, wasn't the basement, it was hiring the guy to dig the basement. He just said, what was his famous words? It's just dirt. It's just dirt, but he- And that irritated me because he single-handedly ruined our project and our lot. He put the driveway in the wrong place, like yes. from the plan. So he made so many mistakes and missteps for it's just dirt. This is how this goes down. I find a guy on Prospect, which is the main thoroughfare in Kansas City, I'm watching the guy work. I say, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. He's got dump trucks lined up. I watch him for a good bit. He makes me wait, so he's, not too antsy about you know disturbing his job. He's completing the work. I'm really watching this guy work efficiently. And I give her the number for him. He was kind of a little bit flaky in the beginning. She says, I got another guy. I said, you hire whoever you want. And for some reason, she felt like she should hire because it was the guy that I found. Because I didn't want the responsibility if it went wrong, right? I did not want to be the one that it was coming back on. So instead, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my bad. I hired the wrong guy. I let her make the decision to hire the wrong guy. And the reality is, I broke a couple rules. I relied on the fact that I didn't get any references because I saw him do his work. So I felt like I didn't need references. He was so flaky and so last minute, he's like, I need 12,500 to get started. And the reason we were willing to pay that or even did it was out of emotion. Yeah. It took us so long to get the building permit. It took us so long to get the septic system. It, we were just so antsy to get going. And he said, I'll get out there tomorrow. You just give me money. We were like, okay. This is one of my biggest cardinal rules never front money on construction especially if you're paying for everything meaning that like if he needs money for fuel for his tractor he shouldn't be in business in fact we haven't even gotten a bill from the guy who already completed the work he's done the whole the, the rework yeah it just will go to tell you people who want the money right away there's a reason because they want you committed to them here's the warning signs that actually happened on the job that we should have known about number one he was not responsive as responsive as he should have been. Number two, when they showed up to meet me at the job, I was with my guy Levy, guy who I hired to dig the hole, hired another guy to dig the hole. And that guy that he hired to dig the hole came up to me with his pretty blue eyes and his big beard and said, are you sure you want me to get digging today? Cause it might rain tomorrow. And I said, yes. And then he came back again. He goes, with his hand out, with the raindrops on it, are you sure? Generally speaking, when someone doesn't want to do the job, in fact, that tomorrow, it didn't ever rain, okay? He was just trying to get out of doing his job, which was a red flag to me, but they got the equipment there. They got the stuff there. Let's go. Well. It's time to put our peers in, and good old Mark Mills says what? That dug the hole all wrong, and he didn't dig that walkout that we spoke of, okay? So he only dug the hole for exactly the side of the basement. He didn't dig any of that extra square foot. Right, so what's our future plans? Our future plans are to finish this house, get to Kansas City, get our ass in gear, and get this thing put up, build it fast as crap. We got our lumber guys ready to go. We got our concrete guys ready to go. We're gonna build this house. We're gonna finish it. We're gonna keep you updated on all the cool things that are going on. And the good news is, you haven't missed any of it because it barely just freaking started, okay? So I'm literally watching a couple other guys build houses right now who started like three months after me and they're way further along than me. But we're gonna catch them. We're not gonna lose, okay? We're gonna finish this house by the end of the year because we do stuff faster than other people. If you set your mind to something, if you set your mind, if you put in your mind that you're gonna get it done, that no matter what happens, you're gonna finish it, you're gonna charge through. If you gotta get it on an excavator, you're gonna get it done. If we need to freaking learn how to drywall, we're getting this job done. It doesn't matter. Subscribe to the channel because I don't get paid for Jack Diddley, you know what. Peace.